And here they are, Daniel going first, uh, trying to set up his combos. Uh, at this point, I think we start talking about uh, them knowing each other's deck, I wanna bet. Uh, if during Swiss it's already quite likely, once you get to the top cut, it's even more likely as you can sit next to your opponent and figure out easily who they are playing. And we start things off with a sharing from Daniel, let's see if there is a shifter. No shifter. So let's take a look at this meals. Uh, and it's a Guido. Ooh, wow. Okay. Great, great start here already. Good meals, especially because now there's also the Sherin, the Aguido, and then also Shuffler. Not yep, bad yep, yep. start. Now the mill five. Let's see if there is an angler from his opponent. There is not, but I already see one of the tech cards, which is the one of end of Anubis, which you can summon with the mannequin cat, and unfortunately will not be an option for Ding Kang for the rest of this game one. And uh, we have seen over the last few months uh, Ding Kang playing always pride and uh, always saying that even going second he, he, he likes the deck a lot because basically he can put easily an OTK throughout his opponent's field. We saw yeah. him smashing a lot of impressive opening from their opponent. And uh, let's see if he has any sort of interruption to stop Daniels or otherwise just play through Daniels' combo later on. Yep, surprisingly enough, uh, Daniel prioritizes uh, milling even more cards, so he's gonna use Kit Kalos uh, and then the Kashira tier element uh, to mill two cards, uh, one of which is Eastern Fusion and then a Rhino Art, which is good enough. Now, potentially, he can get the Scream uh, to discard for the Rhino Art, which I think uh, could be a pretty nice combo. Let's see if he thinks. Uh, the same or if he goes for a different opening here it seems like he's considering the crime which uh, surprisingly enough he is maining yeah he's main decking the crime which is an interesting choice we have seen our players this yeah. weekend uh, side decking it but you know i think i would like uh, my line where you get the scream and you just uh, discard the scream for the rhino yeah. and i think yeah he, he just uh, realized what i was talking about you get the scream then in a new chain you are able to discard it for the rhino art getting you the crime later on alongside another fusion summon so this is a great opening from daniel Probably just clarifying some chain links here with our judges. But yeah, as mentioned, now he will get to special summon the Rhino Heart, discarding the Scream to get the crime. But instead, interestingly enough, uh, will keep it to destroy it probably with Kit Kalos later on. Okay, now he goes for the Merli and the Arena Heart as well. I think this is a very, very good start from Daniel. And um, here looks like the income doesn't have any sort of interruption because yeah. he plays the shifter, but uh, he no. plays impermanence, yeah. I think. But that's it. Yeah, yeah, just shifter and impermanence. But as mentioned, there are a lot of other tech cars in the deck from the Kang. Uh, and you should never count him out. Out of the two, he's surely the more experienced, especially uh, at playing on stage, which is, uh, I think, uh, not exactly like uh, riding a bicycle. It's always uh, kind of stressful. Uh, we have seen, uh, you know, very accomplished players still be kind of shaky when playing uh, here on stream, uh, especially now that we have gathered a beautiful crowd of other players watching this top 16 match. Yep, here it's another fusion. It seems like he will go for the Garura, just trying to go for yet another draw. And he will continue with the Scream. Let's see, yeah. it does. So activates the Scream. This will allow him to mill even more cars and then easily fetch the crime he was looking for at the first place. And now we get the interesting combo, because here, funny enough, he could use the Anubis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He has to be careful. Also, I think there's a, a shifter in Dinkan Farm's graveyard. Yeah. If he really wants to. Let's see. Yeah, interestingly. He's considering getting the end of Anubis here. 
against his opponent, but that would shut down his own cars. So yeah, instead he just grabs a shifter from his graveyard, gonna mill some cars from the top of the deck. Wow. And it's jackpot as the last name available is there. So a lot of playing still from the element player. I tried to do a look at the hand from Dinkan, but I could only figure out uh, one of the monsters. Yeah, so only the sure. angler. Yeah. yeah. And as expected, uh, now we are gonna go for a fusion summon. Stapelia would be amazing knowing you're up against Sprite. So let's see if Daniel goes for it. Yeah. Not a surprise, uh, this is one of the uh, staple cards, which is Tapelia, <laughs> kind of sounding the same, but yeah, this is really, really good against Sprite, uh, not just because it negates, but because it turns the monster into level 1, which means you cannot special summon your sprites if that's the only monster you control. Uh, we can see even uh, more millings from this Kit Kalos, uh, but... For now, we'll move on uh, to another Link Summon, uh, apparently into the Elf. Uh, interesting. Okay. Protecting from being targeted some of his cards, and then we'll use the Kid Kalos uh, to bring back one of his monsters to then go into either Redoer or Dweller. Let's see. First of all, gonna mill some cars, uh, not like he can get much, but he does hit the crime, which to be fair, he wanted to add to his end. So this could be a little bit of a whiff, uh, and I'm not really liking the order here. As mentioned, I would have liked a different play where you get to the crime at the beginning, not risking uh, this mill, but let's see. Daniel doesn't think that's the case. He might go for Baguska. Wow. Interesting. So, goes for the Baguska turn one. Okay. This is not an opening we have seen uh, yet. Maybe, I think he knows that uh, he's up against uh, yeah. Dinka. Ooh. But I see a huge punish in the forms of Book of Eclipse. Yeah. This is super strong. And honestly. here it comes yeah. down from Dinkan. Book of Eclipse uh, as the first card uh, trying to fight back. Uh, this could turn really... Badly for Daniel, who is still able to do a few plays. Uh, but now, let's see if he will activate right away the Elf uh, to get back the Merli and then uh, use the Scream. Uh, if he doesn't, uh, he's in big trouble. Uh, yeah. So here comes another Beaver. Now we go for the Gigantic. And it doesn't seem like he will do anything. Wow. Yeah, and if he doesn't, he's in trouble, because now here he can bring up on the field the blue and take the jet. Yeah, apparently we'll think about this summon once the gigantic hits the field. I think you have to do it. If you yeah. don't do it now, uh, gigantic is going to uh, completely assemble you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You no, cannot no, you summon it, for honestly. the rest of the turn. Yeah. Yeah, and he does, so he will activate uh, the elf, uh, bringing back uh, the dark uh, from the graveyard. Uh, interesting choice here. Yeah, he doesn't have the Merli anymore. And... Uh, yeah, now he can follow this up by using the Drake. But I feel like uh, he could have had much, much better advantage uh, out of this. Because now, as you can see, Gigantic hits the field, getting a blue. And uh, the only card left on the field is this bestial, Bold Drake, in terms of uh, responses. Which the Scream is useless, because you don't have a tier at the moment. Yeah. So I think uh, Dinkan is super happy about this. And as you can see, and now another summon, another effect activated, probably the starter or the smashers, because uh, you can guarantee uh, Zeus uh, if you want, but obviously now that it went for the gigantic, uh, that's not really an option anymore. Yeah. 
you can see him uh, doing uh, some <laughs> quick maths. Uh, this is uh, mainly due to the Gamma being an option in his deck, which is such a strong card that a lot of people just uh, completely missed. I guess he flew under the radar, but uh, Dean Kang is a huge fan of this card, and I think you are as well. Yeah, I'm also thinking about maybe he could go if he manages somehow into the Shadow Mosquito and just... Um, <laughs> Let's see if he finds his way. He's just making some calculation here because, as mentioned, uh, when going second, this deck is very powerful because with the addition of Gamma Burst into it, obviously, uh, it gives a huge boost to the deck. And, uh, yeah, he is considering his options here. And um, let's see. He goes Battle Phase. Okay. Yeah, he has the Gamma Burst already in hand, so... That's that's good news for him. Yeah, at least uh, there is no Zeus coming his way as the Gigantic was activated this turn. And just as a reminder, Dark will not be able to search the deck as it needs to be Link summoned in order to do that. And it was summoned instead by Elf. And here we gonna see the gamma come down as mentioned so strong uh, boosting everything by 1400 life points uh, at, but you have to use it in the main phase did you already attack no 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 during the main phase basically yeah from you the can graveyard. use it uh, yeah. then use yeah, the yeah, other yeah, effect yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so as mentioned the dark cannot search the deck uh, so he will just uh, Deal some more damage. Uh, is there a car face down? Not that it does much with the carrot being there. Again, such a strong uh, option. Uh, I mean, just as warming the field uh, is usually considered uh, pretty weak. But yeah. With this card, it basically doubles uh, the attack of most of your sprite monsters, uh, turning them into real threats. And especially when you open up a shifter, it can really uh, turn your deck into easy OTKs, as you can search it with Jet. And here we'll see a main fist to Omi Bimaru, another great addition to the deck. Oni Bimaru being able to just banish these annoying monsters. And now let's see if he will just end or go for an elf first. He's really considering his options. He's not playing Bestials, right? No, he doesn't. Yeah. yeah. He's not playing Bestials, which is interesting. Otherwise, we could have also obviously uh, seen uh, some of them uh, in his deck. Instead, he prioritized uh, you know, these uh, heavy impact cards such as Book of Eclipse. Uh, and now we get to see the Angler finally. Is he playing two copies of it? Yeah, he's playing two copies, but yeah. uh, he didn't activate the effect, so it looks like... Uh, yeah, because I think he had uh, already two of the yeah. other Nimble. Yeah. Do you think he forgot about it or...? Maybe just wanted to send it so not to have a, let's say... Yeah, but this seems uh, kind of weak, right? I think he has the trap card face down uh, for sure. Yeah. But yeah, definitely not uh, the best uh, comeback I have seen from Dean Kang. Yeah, on, honestly, it will make sense if he has the trap because basically he will be able to bounce back one with sprint by detaching one material mm -hmm. from uh, the gigantic and then taking control of another one with the trap. Yeah, and at the moment uh, the Baguska is uh, doing him a favor as well. Okay, takes it immediately. Yeah. The only thing I'm. Uh slightly concerned about is uh, 
if he was going for a link summon, I guess uh, it's close. Because the decision was also whether to use the only bar or attack. But regardless, uh, he's going to use the sprite double cross right here. Yeah, and I think it makes sense, honestly. So at least... Uh, yeah. He's going to shut down yeah. your opponent. Yeah. Here he's going to attempt to activate Merli, but then he's going to use the Saliek. So great recognition of his position here by Daniel. And you can see Dinka really not being happy about this. Only left with the sprint as a form of defense, we can say. Uh, can't quite tell what he milled yet, uh, but there is a share in there. Oh, and an Abnis okay. as well. So great, great mills here by Daniel, who is in the driving seat. Not surprising that when do we get to the top 16 of our YCS of this caliber, the level also is higher and these duelists are not gonna make their opponent lives that easy they're gonna try their best uh, to at least uh, go to a game free regardless and uh, this seems like it will be the case for this match uh, here as you can see uh, Dinkan is gonna use the sprint we mentioned it was the last line of defense available uh, let's see what he decides to go for Yeah, I think it makes sense to use it here, so you just bounce back the Rukalos back. And um, yeah, still not quite easy from the, to Daniel uh, to deal with all of this, but I think he will find the, his way. I think the, the, the play with Soliak was a good one. Yeah, I mean, Soliak is doing so much for him. Uh, and you can also tell by Dinkan, of course, he's a very experienced player, so he will not uh, give his opponent a free win. He'll uh, make him work for it, uh, but the advantage is obvious. Yeah. And here you can see Kit Kalos being activated, then the Rhino Heart, uh, which first we get to send uh, a few cards. It seems like it was a complete whiff or maybe just a Kash Tira uh, tournament. Yeah, and now we're gonna get to use the Merli. He's thinking about it uh, quite a lot. Uh, I think we use the Scream, which means that every monster from Dinkan has also been lowered. And now uh, let's take a look at uh, which he's gonna go for. It seems like the Kaleido, so yeah. it can break this board quite easily at this point. Yeah, gonna take a look at what is in the graveyard. Nothing too interesting, I would say. So this guarantees the chance to get rid of uh, both the important uh, ones. Yeah, it gets rid of the Bogusk and then uh, I think that pretty much uh, uh, it shut it down Dinkan's field. Yeah, I mean, uh, still having the Kaleido plus the Saliak is great. It's so, yeah, yeah. so strong, you attack over the Gigantic, and uh, I think even if you don't have anything else, and he does. Okay. So he has the Druid Wism as well to just push and clear the whole field. So this is great, great from Daniel. Great stuff here, yeah. Yeah, yeah this is tough, uh, I think. Uh, Ding Kang needs a miracle off the top of his deck. Uh, maybe change of art could be an interesting one to start things off from. Because he really needs at this moment to get rid of some of his opponent resources. And yeah, I think change of art would be sick. Yeah. If he has a sprite engine. Uh, yeah. But now Omi Bimaru is resolving. Good catch yeah. there by Daniel, and he gets back. But this has been enough, uh, and it is Daniel who takes game one.
great start of this top 16. As we mentioned, this duelist had to go all through 12 rounds of Swiss and then two more rounds in the top cut to be here on stream playing the top 16 for a spot in the top eight. As you can see, the crowd is gathering to watch this incredible match between two completely perfect players here competing for the glory and uh, Din Kang once again uh, now against the uh, is back against the wall uh, will try to go for a comeback uh, it is not easy task uh, and we have seen how Daniel can make his life hard but at least uh, this time he will be going first so what do you think he's gonna side in well I'm very curious to seeing how Din Kang approaches this one because basically from what he told multiple times during the past months, he went second against Thielman. Interesting. So maybe with this build, which is kind of slightly different from the one he has been using so far over the last few months, maybe we'll go first because he's playing some cool cards in the side deck, such as Traptic alongside with the Dimensional Barrier. Okay. Which I really like, and he's also yeah on the Triple Tactic Thrust as well, alongside with the uh, Triple Tactics Talent. So. He has quite a few options. I agree. It's uh, one of those deck lists where even if your opponent know your strategy, by playing free barriers, free trust, uh, and uh, free uh, trap trick, uh, even if they know you have some mind games in top cut where you can side those in, go first, uh, and then they even have uh, uh, a lot more uh, useless cards in their deck. But uh, as you mentioned, uh, now it's uh, Daniel who will be going second, uh, and uh, uh, he also has a few tools in his deck, right? Yeah, Daniel, on the other side, I think that uh, he has Dark Ruler no more, which uh, against this deck is relevant, although we have to say that uh, with the double cross, honestly, uh, yeah, it hurts, but not so much. And also there's the Nibiru, but uh, if you're able to put red on the field, it doesn't work out. Absolutely, but our players are ready, so let's just find out who will be the winner of this game too. To me, it looked as if uh, Dean can might go first this game, but let's just see. Nice fist pump there, we like some sportsmanship, and it is. So Ding Kang changing it up and going first. Let's see if he will be punished. There is an upness, but there is a shifter Ooh. coming down. What a start to this game, too. <laughs> Very good stuff here, because basically the shifter is not going to uh, impact Dinka's strategy because now you go for the gigantic Ooh. Ooh. and the dark ruler no more being banished is also a huge deal that would have been a sick top deck from Daniel this seems already quite tough but a nice one again from Daniel he even had the Kelbeck uh, which he can use uh, but I think uh, there is a sprite wow, poster what a and what a start from Dinka wow <laughs> what a start from Dinka honestly <laughs> He opened up with red, the star okay. as well. There is a Druid Swarm, I think, or a Magna, I can't quite tell, coming down. It is Magna, yep. yeah. So it uh, will be able to just put a body on the field. Uh, let's see if he wants to activate its effect, uh, probably considering it, because he can get negated, which wouldn't be the end big deal shifter makes it so that it will be useless for this turn so and now as you mentioned uh, Dinka can do whatever he wants he can get the trap here what do you think yeah you can get the trap honestly and uh, you could go for gigantic and then uh, the thing is that you really need to deal with the magnemut because mm -hmm. the magnemut is going to force out the trap uh, either way later on um, because usually with this end you can do a lot of stuff, uh, yeah. you can go for the mannequin cat as well, uh, but when you have shifter, of course, you know that there is a full turn in which your opponent does nothing. So you really want to prioritize uh, uh, OTKing on the next turn, I would say. Yeah. I think uh, I do like the trap. Yeah, he does get it. Makes sense to me. The trap is great. 
when you have resolved shifter you just makes it so that you can take whatever monster your opponent has and now gigantic coming down getting even more advantage over to the german player So much that he can do. He can't even go into Mannequin uh, plus uh, the Trap card. He can go for a Link, uh, although they get banished, uh, just to guarantee that the next Bestial will be useless uh, from Daniel. Let's see. I think he's considering it a lot, even going for Onimibaru just to banish the Magna. Yeah, he does. Against, again and again, Oni. B Maru coming down just like in the previous game, banishing this Magna until the end phase of Daniel. So as you can see, he is prioritizing an OTK on the next turn. But play is back to Daniel, who gets to add a Bestial. Probably the Druid, right? Yeah, I think it makes sense, honestly, to go for the Nimi Baru banishing the Magna mode because otherwise uh, you will force your double cross activation. So you're just going to prevent them. But uh, I mean, I like it. Because now Daniel has to play under shifter. And uh, maybe Dinka also has uh, either a trap trick or a dimensional barrier, which might help yeah. him out. Yes, so many copies. Uh, he uh, didn't join into the thrust because that would have been amazing too. But we start with a. Uh, uh, commitment i would say with the tournament kashtira because the cards are gonna get banished regardless so i'm not sure if dinka is interested i agree why not let him just go for it and lose some advantage i would say yeah he allows it i think here he Yeah, I mean, Daniel knows that, that there's a double cross being set from Dinka's side here. But uh, yeah, he enters battle phase. The double cross now has been activated. Makes sense. Yeah, it will take it uh, and put it under. Uh, he's thinking about it. <laughs> it looked like as if uh, Gigantic was the choice, and it is. So uh, takes away the tier lament Kashtira. And now what can you even do in Memphis 2? Will this be over quickly into a fast game free or can daniel find a way he does so he might have a baguska here does he play accident but i think there is a barrier Ooh. coming down so yeah barrier was there you were right dimensional barrier shutting everything here Uh, so he's gonna force out the dark, get back the Magna in the end phase. Uh, and now I think Ding Kang is free to do whatever he wants. Uh, just have to make sure that he remembers about it. And I agree with this. Great recognition. He knows that he has to start from the Gigantic just to make the Bestial dead yeah. in the end from Daniel. And from this point on, this is an easy OTK with the Gamma. So yeah. that's what we're going to see. Well played by Dean Kampham, who is trying his best to even the score. And our players picked up their cards. It's 1-2-1. One, one. Great game, great recognition, but great end as well. Yeah, Honestly, really well. the dream end from uh, our Dean Kahn. What can you even get better than that? You get the full sprite engine going, and you get shifter alongside dimensional barrier. No, I got beaver plus yeah. shifter plus red plus How starter. Can you lose? Yeah, plus barrier. Yeah, like honestly, <laughs> <that's> it, like <laughs> honestly, even if he had uh, a few less cards, I think he would have won that yeah. game. So that was uh, absolutely incredible. But that's the way he built this deck. So to be honest, kudos to him. And now the score is even. There is only one game remaining to find out who of them will advance to the top eight. Yeah. But now, as you mentioned, Dinkam will be going second, which he is comfortable with. But what tools does he have in his side deck for going second? Uh, he has, uh, I think, triple tactic thrust alongside with the talent. It's very powerful, yeah. honestly, just to take control uh, of your opponent monsters. And also there's a lightning storm if it really feels like. Mm -hmm. And he also plays evenly matched, 
something that uh, we haven't seen so far uh, for um, as the Sprite player, but... Uh, Which makes sure. sense even with the trust, because uh, as a reminder, uh, evenly matched uh, can be added and used uh, right away with the trust, uh, so that's a great combo. On the other hand, though, uh, we have Daniel going first, uh, and does he really have anything to say to him? No, honestly, he doesn't. No. <laughs> so yeah. I, I think he might not be siding in anything. I mean, maybe we could see the other book uh, which has been popular, we could say as the second option in the side decks, uh, which is the book of Lunar Eclipse, uh, which uh, is, first of all, cannot be Ash Blossomed, which is why some players have been using it. Uh, and it's also kind of an interesting card because you discard one, uh, which can trigger some of your effects, uh, and at the same time can be used uh, better defensively to set two monsters face down, which can be really annoying for uh, the sprite deck. But now our players are basically ready, so let's find out who the winner of Game 3 will be and will advance to the top 8. For one of these two duelists, this will be the last end they draw for the entire tournament. And I see an instant fusion. What a way to start things off. I think Dinka will need a shifter to pair this level. Wow. Very good start from Daniel here, but I think also his end is quite strong because I saw a yeah. Pearl Reino. Let's see if there is impermanence or shifter coming from the Incan. At the moment, he's waiting. And this will give his opponent a lot of utility. And wow, interesting choice here. I thought we were going to see something along the line of crime, but... Okay, Dinkan for some reason decides to show us the end, uh, and it's evenly matched plus Book of Eclipse. Yeah. So let's not count him out of this. Uh, but this is really surprising. I thought we were gonna see something along the line of a crime, because if you get it, wow. wow. Oh my oh. God, what are these mills? You can see Dinkan shaking his head. Both Agido and Kelbeck. This is gonna be rough. Uh, now he's going to mill a lot of cards, honestly, and he could get out of control. Uh, let's see if uh, Dean can, can mill any copy of his uh, Nimble Angler. Yeah, but even so, this yeah. is so much advantage uh, for Daniel, who will be able to use two fusion summons uh, and even a third if he feels like that's the correct way to go about this, plus milling 10 cards. Uh, this is a rough, rough start from uh, the German player uh, to fight back. He's considered only using one. Uh, interesting. Okay. Uh, you think that's a wise decision? Ooh, oh, and Gamma is lost, uh, which is also one of the best tools for going second. Uh, I'm sure Dinkan is not happy about that, but I'm really intrigued as to why Daniel only milled uh, five. Honestly, he could have afforded to actually mill 10. Yeah. So Why not? I would have gone for the lineup, honestly. But um, maybe he wants to just do it afterwards uh, when he has uh, Root Kalos for the angler. But I don't know. It's definitely unusual, I would say. And uh, we'll see if that uh, pays off. Uh, regardless, uh, this is uh, amazing. Yeah. So A very good start. And, and yeah, goes. another fusion summon here for Daniel. Gonna check once again the graveyards. As you can see, Gamma is no longer a concern, which makes your life so much easier. Let's see if... Uh, I think he has a crime in the end as well, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, might be. Yeah, which uh, honestly would be awful news because Dinkang is holding uh, evenly matched. And uh, unfortunately, crime is one of the few days to, if not the only way, honestly, to deal with this. Yeah. As you mentioned, he even is holding into the Perle Rhino. No, no, his end is incredible, honestly. Wow. Yeah. Even what the ball Drake. Uh, this end uh, is really, really strong. And now we get to mail three. He has a normal summon yeah. yet. So. Let's take a look at this. Uh, wow, the Agido. So a second chance to mill five. 
Is he interested? You can see he's debating. He doesn't seem that interested in melee five. No. He doesn't. So okay. once again, the shots down this Agido and forgo to use its effect. Instead, he will probably get an Avnis as another layer of protection. Yep. At the same time, though, we could see a very good combo from Dinkang, if combo is the correct word, in Book of Eclipse plus Crime. Uh, yeah. Because that is uh, really devastating. And I think that's what we're going to see. So I think uh, uh, this is still far from over because uh, Dinkan has drawn into some of his going second cards. Let's see if he will see the line, though, because he needs to activate Book of Eclipse. But he starts things off with Prosperity. Makes sense. Maybe you get uh, to another copy of uh, uh, Evenly Matched, uh, and you might as well use that uh, instead. Again, still far from over, uh, there is also the Avnis. Uh, but it's gonna be a close one, as expected, uh, and uh, I think uh, uh, going to game three is only fitting. But let's take a look at these cars. Uh, a lot of uh, interesting options. Uh, mind control, uh, the Nimble, they are all really, really cool options here. Even the Impermanence could be, but uh, yeah, I think mind control is really interesting one. And I agree with the pick. Uh, Hi, here we are gonna see a Book of Eclipse. This could be rough, because uh, we could see Book of Eclipse, uh, which has to be negated, uh, most likely. Then a crime, which has to activate, but then the evenly match completely destroying uh, Daniel. Let's see which of this is gonna come down uh, from the Kang, who is really thinking about this one, with nine and a half minutes left. So. 1,000 left ones from Eastern Fusion might be an issue here from Daniel. Yeah, I think here you go. And here yeah. it is, Book of Eclipse. Uh, his opponent uh, might have to use the crime, uh, and he does, uh, which makes Dinkang super happy because he will uh, be able to use his evenly matched uh, now. This is brutal. Uh, this combination, wow. honestly. And here he uh, comes, evenly matched completely disrupting his opponent. He knows, he knows that there is a mind control in the end from Dinkang. So he might have to keep the rule Carlos here. I think you're most likely obliged because... Uh, yeah, you can see him shaking his head. Wow. He's, yeah, as mentioned, the rule Carlos uh, seems like it makes sense to keep, uh, but it's uh, brutal. Uh, okay, yeah, pay attention to which were materials instead. Nice decision. I agree with this a lot. Uh, uh, if he has a shuffler, and he does, he keeps the Perle Rhino. Well played, well played here by Daniel. Great recognition. I think he played really well here. Not a joke that he is in the top 16. And this might be enough to shut down Dinkang. Because now he goes for Angler, and I think uh, right away Daniel is going to use his Shuffler yeah. just to prevent any possible Sprite from hitting the field. Yeah, I think it makes sense. Yes. Yeah. Very well played here by Daniel. Really, really wise uh, in shuffling back uh, some tiers to then just use the Rhino to pop uh, the Angler. And there are just about eight minutes left, uh, which is a lot of... Trouble. I'm trying to take a look at the last cards from uh, it's impermanence, Dinkan. right? Jet and impermanence. Yeah. Yeah. I have doubts about impermanence, but you might be right. And this uh, is a great, great news. That's popped. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. come back to the deck. I think Daniel has done it. Yeah. He played really well, and uh, that's not a joke in top 16 against a good player and on stream. So I'm impressed by Daniel now. Yeah. Very well played by him, honestly. Yeah. And yeah, and plays back to him. Nice, uh, nice deserved uh, turn. Uh, now it's only one turn uh, which he needs to fight back, gets ahead on life, uh, and there is only one impermanence uh, that is stopping him from achieving his dream of advancing to the top eight. Gonna take a quick look, uh, not uh, wanna mess up uh, these final moments of the duel. But also gotta uh, take his time to make a move, and he does uh, start things off uh, with the Baldrake. Uh, 
at least is guaranteed to be ahead on life. He goes for normal summon Avnis and just gonna attack. Uh, Oh, no, okay. Goes Interesting. For someone instead. Yeah, he goes for the dark. Gonna use the dark to take a sprite blue from the graveyard. And then gonna keep going this time into the sprint. But this uh. impermanence can hurt so much. This could be a huge punish from Daniel, which only needed to attack. And now has done himself in a huge trouble. Wow. Oh my god, this uh, might cost him the game. And what an unfortunate way to do it. I cannot believe this. Dinkam has managed to get himself out of deep water. Wow. Sometimes overthinking is the way you can get out of uh, a YCS top cut. Yeah. And it's a shame uh, for Daniel, really. Wow, what a turnaround of events, honestly, here. <sighs> Heartbreaking for sure for Daniel fans and friends uh, as he is playing this extremely well uh, and now it's enough. Uh, yeah. This will be enough to seal the game. And the handshake uh, coming down. Ding Kang wins and advances. What a match we just witnessed. Uh, honestly, all of the premises were absolutely incredible. Uh, two good players in the top 16 uh, of one of the biggest YCSs we have ever had. Uh, and they gave it their best. Uh, honestly, it was really back and forth match. Uh, really, really good level of playing uh, and uh, good and interesting tech, both in the main deck and in the side deck for both. Uh, and to be fair, I don't know what I can say much about this. No, I mean, honestly, also, Daniel, I think he played very well uh, when there, the Evely match was activated in Game 3. Absolutely. Just to prevent his opponent from activating the mind control. And then I think that uh, he could have entered Battleface to just attack, you know? Yeah, Game, uh, I, I gotta say, it, it was a weird one, especially Game 3 was the deciding one. Uh, of course, it was getting closer to timeout. It looked as if the opening from Daniel was absolutely insane. When you see Eastern Fusion going first, I think you, you think to yourself, oh, I've won this. Then there is a weird decision number one, not milling with Aguido, yeah. which could have changed the entire game, to be fair. We don't know, because if you think about it, uh, a second shuffler would have been enough. He just needed to win yeah. another shuffler, and it would have been enough to win this duel. Also, of course, Book of Eclipse plus evenly matched is no joke. As you mentioned, though, Daniel played it extremely well. He knew about the mind control, which means he just had to keep uh, not his monsters, but his field spell. Yeah. So very well played, but then again, he got uh, maybe too greedy, he smelled blood, uh, and he uh, uh, basically went all in into this sprint, which got him permanenced, uh, and even Dinkam could not believe it. Uh, but I really want to hear it from the man himself, uh, who is ready with Ed. So thank you guys for being with us, uh, and let's hear it from Ed and Dinkam Farm. Thank you, Marcello. I'm here with the top 16 feature match winner, Din. How are you feeling at this point? You were just talking to me about how you've been to some previous tournaments. You've topped quite a lot, but this feels quite good for you. Yes, I'm so relieved because um, the last three major uh, events I just uh, lost at the first top cut round. And now I finally made it past that round and I got in, uh, into the deep cut. So. Yeah, I'm pretty you certainly did. With top eight, very exciting. That's a great thing to have. We're going to have a massive interview with each person, quick fire in a bit. But first, let's go through the game that we just watched. It was very exciting. Obviously, there was things like Book of Eclipse in your first game to clear the field. St uh, Sprite double cross to take the Baguska. You negated the Baguska with Suliak, got into the combo. Daniel went, then ended up popping up, building a huge field. So you just scooped. So on a feature match, when you're having the sort of first game letting you down a little bit, what are you thinking? What's going through your mind? So with my side deck and my main deck overall, I knew that the second game was like pretty much secured um, as long as, uh, as I didn't break. Um, but of course, I was afraid of the third game because I have to draw like Shifter and so on. I, I need to draw the hard outs, uh, which I fortunately did with the book and evenly. So yeah, I was quite happy with my hand uh, in game uh, three. 
and uh, yeah. So you mentioned Shifter. We saw Shifter straight away in game two, and then the D barrier to prevent the Baguska setting up that OTK with Gamma Burst, so he just scooped. And then we got into game three. There was the instant fusion from Daniel immediately, built Baguska, and then the Book of Eclipse was negated by Crime, but then you used the evenly matched. There was a moment where he deprived you of using the mind control by keeping the Pelerino on the field. So when that happens, what are you, what are you thinking then? Yeah, um, I was uh, went ahead of me because I should have done the pot to get the mind control afterwards, uh, after the evenly. Because I, I kind of got the feeling that it was crime, so I used uh, book first and then evenly. Uh, then I should have used um, the pot so I can dig for the appropriate cards. So that was a misplay for me, but uh, fortunately uh, it worked out at the end. It did, it paid off. So at least something you know for the top eight matches, you know exactly when to use that pot and when to take that mind control. But congratulations, really amazing. We'll be speaking to you again very soon, along with the seven other competitors you're going to be up against in this top eight cut. But congratulations again. Guys, don't go anywhere, because like I said, we're about to have a rapid-fire introduction of your top eight cut here at YCS Leon. Don't go anywhere.